Joining us tonight, Mark Dubowitz, the executive director of the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Mark, good to have you back with us. Thanks, Luke. Uh, let's start with, if we may, what's happened in Denmark and the threat, the clear threat, uh, from the Russian uh, uh, government, Vladimir Putin making it very clear through his ambassador that Denmark's participation in the European Missile Shield would make their warships uh, targets of Russian nuclear missiles. Your reaction? Lou, Putin continues to provoke, and he provokes because he realizes that there's going to be no price for these continuous provocations. He is fighting a war in eastern Ukraine. He has annexed Crimea. He is threatening other Eastern European countries. And all he's been hit with are a number of sanctions that may have been somewhat painful. But for Putin, this is about rebuilding the Russian Empire, and this is about Russian nationalism. And he sees in the White House a president who began with a reset and has now essentially resorted to ineffectual action. If you're Vladimir Putin, why wouldn't you continue? Do we understand Vladimir Putin and his motivations better than we understand those of our own president? Vladimir Putin is uh, interested in power politics. He's interested in expanding Russian power. And as a result, what we fail to do is we fail to read the intentions of Vladimir Putin, of Ali Khamenei, the supreme leader of Iran, of Bashar Assad, the, the president of Syria. These are hard men. These are brutal men. And they have a very clear sense of, of their country's national interests and are certainly playing to our weaknesses, playing to our need for compromise and for rationality. And unfortunately, we are losing. And uh, this is a significant price for American national security. The fallout continues. The rift, if you can call it that, it must be, it, it's a, a yawning chasm that has uh, grown up between Netanyahu and Obama. Luckily, the American people and the Israelis remain close. But ex explain to us the role of this One Voice organization and the, uh, the V15 group in Israel and how the administration allegedly used them to intrude far more than we ever suspected into uh, the uh, Knesset elections. Well, the U.S. military has a, a slogan, no better friend, no worse enemy. And unfortunately, un under this president, we've essentially flipped that on its head. We are no better enemy, no worse friend. And I think with respect to Israel, which is obviously our closest ally, our most loyal ally in the Middle East, and a, a model of democracy, and also a country that's willing to fight and defend itself, doesn't ask Americans to send American boys and girls over there to defend the, the Jewish state. We now see this terrible relationship between President Obama and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, and it sounds like President Obama was certainly committed to the defeat of the Israeli Prime Minister, and it sounds like, based on these allegations, that uh, money was being spent, funding was being provided in order to facilitate that defeat. It, it's an interesting list of so-called partners for One Voice. They include labor friends of Palestine and the Middle East, British Muslims for a Secular Democracy, the Association of British Muslims, uh, the Christian and Muslim Forum. I, I mean, these are, this is an interesting list. Uh, it just doesn't really answer whose interests are being pursued here. It's, it's, a, it's a very troubling issue. I mean, there seems to have been clear and blatant interference in the Israeli election. And I think what is missing here is that regardless of who had won that Israeli election, whether it was Benjamin Netanyahu or whether it was the, uh, the left, the Labor Party, the fact of the matter is Israelis are united across the political spectrum. And they're united in their fear of a nuclear-armed Iran. They're united in their fear of the fact that Iranian proxies have encircled them, are on every border and that the Middle East is in flames, and at a time when the Middle East is in flames and we should be providing our support to our closest ally, they see that the White House does not have their back. Mark Dubowitz, we thank you for being with us. We appreciate it as always. Appreciate your insight. Thanks, Lou, for having me.